everybody, welcome back after that break. It's Avagard versus Corbin, a game two. Avagard, of course, took that game one. Need to find the second win to keep the pressure off on Mamas and Pajamas. I'm off Jackal, and I'm joined by Lynx Clone. Lynx, do you expect anything different to happen in this next set of picks and bans? If Corbin have learned anything, there are two things they need to learn. Get rid of Rantoska. That's another thing. Remember, get rid of those early game assassins that made it troubling, as well as possibly get rid of the Kabraken. Otherwise... They had a very decent, and actually played okay, especially Trilogy on that Nemesis. I expect to see that get picked for the second time. That's when he did such actually a really good job out of the Nemesis. You would you normally expect to fall off if you get put behind, but instead Trilogy really using those Divine Judgments to the advantage of the team. I sort of expect a similar comp coming out from Corvidae as last time, the similar comp coming out from Avangard. They both played them extremely well, but Corvidae's main issue was their grouping and their choice of engagements. And just a change in tactics, a change in communications can really help that out rather than a change in team comp as we look to go into the picks and bans. Corbin Day are going to be the blue side this time, so a change in tactics already. Yeah, so as I said, just just a bit of a change in bans as well as considering who you want to get for that first pick. You can't ban all the strong junglers and midlaners. If Raijin gets through, if Susanoo gets through, we're just one of those kind of gods. You can look to pick it up, but Corbin Day... Not even choosing to the red, they ban out so the obviously Thor respecting instead. the fact that Thor is a very high controlling jungler, rather than a high burst jungler. So just want to make sure that they have this um, early game as a control game, rather than a burst one. Right, you take it out by avant-garde. And then Corviday, they realize Rob Diggity is very well known for his Huyi, so they just want to take that away as soon as possible. Due to the fact that avant-garde, they usually like to draft a Huyi during that first phase. And now we're just going to wait for Avant to get just pick that final ban. That's going to be the Kabraken Avant. If we don't want to pick him this game, you guys can't Yeah, so it's a sensible either. ban, and, well, Corbin A, option back over to them. Both Rantasker and Susano are open. They can elect to leave one of them away, I want to say. Apart from the fact that Avagard have shown that they will play Susano in awkward positions. Back is picked up. Yes. So instead of picking one of the most considered, basically an S tier or S plus tier god, they are, even though Barkas is considered one of the strongest supports, I feel like that's a massive mistake. And as you can see, Avantgarde pounds on the opportunity to pick up both Susano and Ratatuska for their early game. That is going to be insane. So Avantgarde were really the only two to play Susano in down. the mid lane. We can see that reprise. We can also see Susano or Ratatuska put into the solo lane if the matchup is good enough. Sol and Nemesis picked up for Corbin Again, two. Or, and Kumbakana is going to be there to try and put an end to that already. Yes, but the Soul, I actually kind of like that more. Than, if that's going to be going mid, I kind of like that more than the Nace, simply because Soul has that stellar burst. Combine that with a Soul Stone and a Purple Pot, and you can do quite a lot of damage. Also, the thing is, the Soul is... ...or works very nicely, rather than the first band from Avant-Garde. Yeah, and it's going to be followed up by Yana So Corvide, thinking that this Susano and Red Tasker combination is going to be the solo and jungle in some form. Going to be banning away Mouse's signature god. Tear taken away by Avagard as well, focusing out that solo lane, making sure KO is on. A rather uncomfortable god. He didn't really look too, even in, even when he was in good positions. Still are taken away by Corvide. Yes, they just want to really target our mouse. They think, look, we need to take out all the high burst gods. If we, especially if we put a soul there, if they don't have the burst to counter the soul, soul can just stomp on the lane, take a tower within three minutes. And picked up for Rob Diggity. We saw him play a decent Chiron last week. As I said, even though they lost, Chiron did a very good job. He was very good with the Centaurus, as well as the Masterful Shot, landing his abilities really nicely. And since Chiron has come a bit more back into favor, thanks to Transcendence and Golden Bay being removed, it's actually a very nice pickup. Ethan and Mamana are the final pickups from Corbinate, so again, Tricor of basic attacks followed up by two high-damaging support-ish characters, as Nuwa is again reprised by Avangarde, and I do like that pick. It did well for Mouse in the mid lane last game. No reason to say it's not going to do well again this game, considering it just gets her, just gets Nuwa time away from Nemesis, that fire shards. It's not to mention, it's basically a five-man world wave, and then you also have to combine that with the Riot Task, who has the three of the Cosmos, Usano, who can rotate around the map, even if he's in, put in the solo land, he could either be jungle, solo, or mid, he can rotate around the map very easily. And then you have Gruff, he'll most certainly be picking up a blink early, as what we saw last time, and just going on blinking, mezzing, landing the groggy strike, and setting up the damage of either just a Typhoon, a Sharding Metal, or just so many different combos. 
Avant-garde, I don't see them losing. If anything, I see a very early invade coming out from Avant-garde just because if they, especially if they put the Susan on Ratatuska in the solo and jungle, they can just go both red pots, invade, and get a very early nice lead. I just have to make sure, though, that they do not get caught up by these early wards placed out by Corvide. There's so many of them. There's three of them on this left-hand side already. If they do look to invade, though, oh my god, they need to go down the lane and then take them by surprise from there. Yeah, so as you said last time, Corvide were very careful about the invade. They accidentally also doubled wards, just they were so cautious about the invade. You can see Chuckles sitting around that fire giant, fire elementals area. They are most certainly looking to invade, and... I would kind of be disappointed in it, especially since both of them, especially since this Ratatuska solo has gone Bluestone. So combine that with Flurry, which is a four times as a hit, then you got the Bluestone, and then you have Storm Carter, which is basically two abilities in one against a Nemesis, who doesn't have that good a jungle here, and a Vamana, who once he's used either the Umbrella Rang or Armored Umbrella, can't really do much either. So El Chuckle's currently standing on a ward today. No Disinvader's going to be coming out. They're going to go to the back Harpies instead. And that's a smart decision, just make sure they do secure some form of farm, but they don't care to have a guard, they're gonna go in, they, can, they know that they're not on the speed buff, they're just gonna lie in wait, wait for the invade, wait for the chance to come out, Trilogy K, they do not know this going down, the speed buff is still up, they're wondering where they are, it's just all a bay KO! Very low already, the curse comes out, curse on the Susano jungle, that's gonna be your first blood going to El Chuckles! That's exactly what I expect, especially with that weakening picked up, that's really what you do when you invade. You get a red pot, one of you get cursed, you wait for them to do the buff, and once they've used their abilities, you kill them. Even though they went back camp, they still made the fatal mistake of using their abilities. If anything, they could have possibly just gone for either blue buff or gone straight to land. They shouldn't have sort of tried to stay around that area. They knew they were going to get quite out now. Avad and Chuckles and both Liquid Renegade have rotated over to the solo lane to make the lane clear even easier for Chuckles, as he's already hit level 2, while KO is still level 1 and doesn't even have a blue buff. Yeah, Trilogy still level as well, just only managing to clear his speed buff by himself with the help of Desecrator at the very end. Mouse, level 3 already, Liquid Renegade, training back just shy of level 3 himself, thanks to those uh, fire elementals which he did pick up. He also has to go ahead and pick up his own speed and his own blue, so there's a lot of experience on the map for Avantgarde to get right now. I would expect them to take full advantage of the fact they'll hit level 5 when Corvidae are level 3 slash level 4 in their jungle mid, respectively. And now, actually having a look at the dual line, we can see it's a bit of a different story. For Corbett, I actually have the pressure since they've decided to put a soul into the ADC roll and put the need into the mid. So soul, thanks to that soul stone plus stellar burst, as I mentioned earlier, very good lane clear. Grub trying to use the mez, but just, it's going to be a very similar situation. Yeah, and it takes Rob Diggity a wild period to get his wave player on like a string. He doesn't really, so you don't really go power potions on Hunters and Golobo is out of the game. And it's sort of why you see Chiron be back into the meta right now. Celebus not going to be able to affect Rob Diggity there though. As already, Mouse hits level 5 off those back up. He's looking Renegade level 4. Has only really just procced into it, so still needs a couple of waves. Let's try to achieve Desecrate and meet them up in the mid. Yeah, so what Avantgarde can look to do, since the, since Corvidae are trying to pressure out this duo lane, it's essentially, Corvidae push out a little bit too much and the Susano decides to rotate, they can really punish this aggressiveness of Corvidae and shut down every single lane, because currently they've already shut down basically the mid lane because the jungle is the second mid laner. They've shut down the solo lane, they just now need to shut down this final lane to secure them the early game once and for all. Uh, Gruff and Rob Diggity certainly feeling a bit of the pressure. Gruff quite low, forced to pop the last remaining remnants of his potions. This Kaisification just be there. They're still sitting pretty. Kaisification out of pots, but just speedy. He's still sitting on three mana and one health pot. As well as the fact that he has a heal on his kit as well, so it's going to be very difficult to dislodge this soul. And now Trilogy also slowly making his way over to the duel lane, just seeing if he can find something in case of the decide to overextend and just make sure they can get rid of Gross passive. Because in a mid game team fight, you don't want to have to deal with auto attacking someone to death when they've already died. You just want them dead. And now Trilogy is coming back from behind. Uh, Desecrator all just uses Neethold onto World Chuckles when he's behind the tower. And there's no follow up whatsoever. On the left hand side, Gruff is quite a bit affected by that Divine Judgment. Diving under the tower's trilogy, but he thinks better of it. The Stellar Burst nearly puts Kumbakana into his passive form, but he's going to be A OK. -okay. Hitting level 5 now is just speed. If he was level 5 before that fight started, that would have been a dead Kumbakana. Yes, and as we saw, just they tried to do that, but all Grub had to do, you just saw him, he just messed, he stood in front of all three of them and messed, and now Corvidae knowing that they're back, they're trying to invade this red buff, oh, but, but mid Mouse lane. is already far ahead of that. Mid lane, Desecrator, he's low, Liquid Raider getting really claiming that life with this, with the uh, Typhoon, but on the backside, Mouse quite low himself, 
Force go into his own tower. It's just been he looked to try and take him out, but it's going to get obliterated by the shiny metal minion explosion combination. Classification quite low himself. Force get away. Look at Renegade. Instead, he's going to be zoning out the Nemesis, chasing him down. Trilogy quite low. And this should be a kill when the curse comes out. It does indeed. Liquid Renegade, one more basic, does kill, but a fourth kill of the game, and Kaiservacation, he's not getting out of this one, fifth kill of the game, going to Avantgarde, this time it goes to Rob Diggity. So just going having a look at the grass, this is where that is, single objective being taken, only the kills that have happened, 2,500 XP, 2,300 gold difference, this is not at all a core that I wanted to start that game, especially due to the fact that they've got the Susano two kills, that is the worst possible thing that could happen, and now he's trying to steal away the speed buff with El Chuckles. Yeah, and Al Chuckles pressuring out KO by himself as a rare Tasker versus Vermana. Vermana even popped his ultimate, and he still wasn't able to contend with the damage. As now Neath forced the black backflip already, and it's going to be Desecrator. Going to be pressured out yet again, but he does get a double root. A liquid Renegade and El Chuckles going to have to back off. Yes, that was actually very well played by Desecrator. They're just having a bunch of weaves around the tower. It was actually a pretty smart play for Neath, especially in the mid lane, where you expect to get dank ganked sorry, by the Susano. And now Avad just using that fog, backing away, just playing it a little bit more safe, waiting for this wave to be pushed in, while Mouse can easily just by himself using that shining metal, the fog, or even just play so just push it away. Trilogy was frames away there from managing to stop the Grimmery Gates back with a slice and dice. Left side mid harpies look like they're going to go the way of Corvidae. There's a Vine Church where it comes down onto Mouser, looking for the kill on the mid laner quite low. They should be able to kill, they should be able to kill him here, but it's just out of reach. Kaisification with the basic attack. Corvidae are on the board, and they are going to be rewarded with just getting out with their lives, it seems. No, not at all. Liquid running out now. Chuckles both rotate over from the solo lane jungle. They're not getting anyone getting out. Kaisification trying to use the belt, but the Wind Siphon is an extremely strong ability. The belly flop. Should allow him to get away. Rob Diggity also having a rotate over. They're looking to take this tier one. They're not happy after losing that kill. No, they wanted the clean slate. They wanted the perfect game. Did have a car. They're going to lose that. Everybody call Mouse a feeder in chat, please. Yes, Mouse. He's done quite a bit recently. Today, he's actually been playing extremely well. Both on well, both times when he's played Nua. But, like, it's good to see him performing a lot better. Like, in the last couple of weeks, he hasn't been having the best games. But now, really coming into his stride. And it's good to see him just playing this well. Yeah, they do need this sort of burst of form coming out from somewhere, considering that in the next two weeks of them are pivotal for determining whether they go to land. They've got dead weight next week on Sunday, and then followed up by that pivotal game against Llamas. If they can find one game against dead weight, that's going to set them up massively, and that's just going to be built up off momentum from this set. Yes, it's always nice to like, go into the next week knowing that you've gotten yourself some wins. You can kind of like be a little bit happy about it, so you can go in, yes, I've achieved what I wanted to achieve. And I can go in because now it's still one and six. It's six minutes in. That's a very good. That's basically a kill a minute. I think I said that last game, but Avant just doing it again this game, and even more so thanks to that early first blood and aggression from Liquid Renegade and El Chuckles. Yeah, and it's this early pressure which has been working out for them. They managed to find a couple of invades as well from time to time, which is denying experience to Corvid and allowing Avangard to extend their lead even further. The Gold Fury hasn't been sniffed out once by either team. If Avangard managed to get the first Gold Fury in the next three minutes, Corvid are looking at a very bleak early game here. It already is extremely bleak. Luckily, Just Speedy is actually doing quite nicely for himself. He may have died once, but he's still on equal footing with Chiron. And Soul just gets stronger and stronger as that mid game comes along. Already, the Stellar Burst is doing a decent amount of damage. But just wait till she gets something like a Polynomicon, a Obsidian Shard, even just finishing off her shoes of the Magi. Well, you'll start to see the spike in damage compared to what she's doing now. Well, given that the uh, Stellar Burst no longer counts as a basic attack, a lot of people have been shying away from the Polynomicon on the Soul. I've, I'm still, I still am a fan of it, but I do, agree, I do see a lot more people building a Mage style uh, Soul as the Speed Invade comes out, and it does look like Corbinet do defend it. But the fight's already broken out. Oh, Chuckles quite low. And Trilogy wants this kill. The fight shot's gonna claim just Speedy's life is desecrated. Gets a kill to El Chuckles. One for one already. Trilogy quite low. But Liquid Renegade gonna be the next one. The full KO makes his presence heard. And Gruff is low. Gonna be blinking away. KO still giving you chase. Needs to find the Umbrella rank. But his mouse sets in a lot of right now. Forced to use his Sanctuary. It's not gonna be enough. Desecrated with that BM backflip. And now Gruff, the only one survivor on that side, has to get away. But during that time, Chiron is able to solo. The, sorry, I'm able to solo the soul. That's a really complicated one. And now he's going to take this tier one tower. So even though Corvair were able to pick themselves up four kills, it's still seven to four and possibly a tier one as well as soul is slowly trying to make her way back before this tower falls. Well, Rob Diggity didn't really, didn't really solo. Solo was taken away from him by Mouse. It's a 2v1 every single time there's a new one on the map. 
Yes, new eye is just one of that annoying presence, especially if you don't have that sanctuary. You just don't know when it's coming. Once she goes into the clouds and you have no way to answer, especially due to the fact that, that uh, sorry, Corvidae, the only healing they really have is either the Neath heal, the soul heal, or a tiny bit from the Nemesis ultimate, or even the tiny bit from the mana. It's all very tiny heals. It's not like these big Guan Yu sort of heals or Sylvanas heals. It's these little heals. So when new eye goes into the air, she is going to be coming down. Now putting quite a decent amount of burst damage, and now she's pushing the mid T1 tower with her clay soldiers. Yeah, I mean, early game, the fire shards won't really do too much damage. Too much damage. Once Nuwa starts to build a bit of power and then starts to level up the fire shards at level 20, when you've got about 600 magical power, the fire shards can be hitting you for about 700, 750 damage, and that's that hurts. That really hurts. Not to mention, as I said last game, the vision it provides is really important. You just want vision. Vision is one of the most important things in Smite, and I'll say it again just to clarify how important it is. Especially since you want to be able to kill the Nemesis. That Nemesis is the one real threat for Avan right now, as KO knocks up El Chuckles. Yeah, well, Nemesis is really has a really, really good pick against uh, the Nuwa if you're trying to counter the ultimate ability. Simply because the reflect damage can make the damage go onto Nuwa instead of the Nemesis and allow her to live. Or just maybe kill Mouse as he uses the ultimate for an escape rather than for an engage. Yeah, that is the one thing you have to be careful of. Essentially, Avan need to ensure that that shield is down and they need to communicate that as Gruff blinks in with the Mez. And it's going to be a good engagement. That comes by Judgment Trilogy. We take it out quite low. How comes this Typhoon? They're looking for Trilogy. The claim supposed you should be having any second now, but the... Well, I think the Shining Metal was down as Kale rotates in. Force is ultimate already. And out comes the Curse, but flopping up the walls. Classification just been making the rotation as well. They're looking for Liquid Red again. As out comes the Stellar Burst. And then, well, just been claims his life. However, El Chuck was not happy with that kill. It actually comes with it through the Cosmos. Dive the TG Tower. Picks up the Trilogy. And now using that flurry to re reduce the projections of KO, runs away as they secure the tier 1 tower in mid with Rob Diggity and Mouse. Yeah, they're going to take down that structure. 500 gold added to the lead of Avant-Garde. Kaisification, he's not happy about that play either, but he's, he's not going to be able to find the flop. He's been missing a lot of those flops right now. Just a second or two behind the action. He needs to make sure he's rotating it a bit more aggressively. He actually did do well earlier on. You saw that he belly flopped and Sol capitalized that beautifully using that supernova all nine stacks in the exact same place. So as the gold was falling from the sky, they couldn't really do anything except just take the burst. Even at level 11 where the ultimate only has two points and it's supernova, if you hit all nine hits, does a fair decent amount of damage. So the tier one tower is down for Corvidae and this is a massive opportunity for Avangard to take down this gold fury. That mid tier one just provides a central hub to defend the entirety of the map from. And with that gone, as KO actually takes out El Chuckles, there's a f massive rotation over to this right-hand side. And, well, speaking of Gold Fury, this is going to be starting up by looking ready again. And Gruff, Mouse making a rotation as well as Rob Diggin, but just Biddy's already sniffed this one out. Classification. We're taking out quite low. Going to be bursted there by the claiming an explosion. Classification quite low. Up in the air. Gruff Trilogy. Going to be reflecting some damage back to himself. And, well, it's going to be just a wash there. Quite low of both the supports, forcing them both back. But the air goes. Um, Mouse is not going to be able to kill Kuz for this match to find his way back to base. Desecrator quite low. Chased down by Liquid Renegade Trilogy on the back as well. Typhoon comes out. This should be a kill. Onto the knees. One more base guy is But the slow from Slice of Dice is good. Liquid Renegade by himself. Slowed down by the Umbrella Rag. Mouse trying to find some support as he teleports away with the Wind Siphon. Yes, yeah, so it and with that team fight over, that was actually a fun again. Just keep applying the pressure. Were they able to get the Gold Fury? Uh, no, they were not able to get the Gold Fury, unfortunately. The the fact that they were all back at base when that gank in that right-hand side happened, but they didn't have the burst. They didn't have the damage potential to take down that Gold Fury before the rotations were caught, they came back out to this left-hand side. Yeah, so now, basically, they can look to, to just keep farming up and then go back to the gold fury once everyone's back up again and look to take it. Because they still have the advantage, don't they, Ivan? They're still uh, heading kills, still a bit of a gruff advantage, and they can look to still try and win this game by a landslide. Yeah, gruff and Rob Diggity currently sitting nice and happy in this duel lane, but they are getting pushed out a tiny bit by just being in classification. Gold fury potentially started up here by Trilogy and Desecrator by themselves. Just a nemesis and Neath versus a big giant gold monster. But classification of rotation as well. This is a free gold fury by Corvidae. Oh my god, I had no idea that was going down. It wasn't even wanted. Mouse walked around the corner now, sees that it is done, and sees that, well, it's a bit of a mistake that I haven't got as Corvidae even up the game. 
So that was kind of a repeat of game number one. We saw that Corbett just sneaking that Gold Fury by themselves. And since they have that soul, they have Desecrator. Those two have really good attack speed combined together. As well as the Supernova, they can easily just take it down without having too much of a worry at all. Yeah, but the last time it happened in game one, Avengar got some kills and got some pressure off it. This time it's an absolutely clean Gold Fury classification pull back in with the Wind Siphon. But there's just no follow-up. Rob Diggity too far behind the rest of his team. Mouse... Just catches Desecrate in the jungle. Liquid already getting to be caught up by a Ridge as well. Down to half health. Has to go back. Or at least just stay at the back of the fight and find some camps to heal up off on. Kayo forced to dash away from Elchunkers in the solo lane. Meanwhile, as the aggression still comes out on this left-hand side from Avangard. Yes, with the aggression coming down, really... Oh, sorry. Just basically, they Avon can keep just applying this pressure. They still have the advantage and they need to now, especially now... Oh, but Mouse is going to be falling down there to Desecrator. This, the uh, Sanctuary was just missed time. was actually a good time Sanctuary, but it just wasn't enough to length to, to stay alive. Chaos Force used a little bit to get away. Out comes the Supernova. Just been to kill something. Ready to get up into the air. Goes out. Chuck is looking to land down on this fight. Who's going to be landing down? The Centaurus does come out. And they're going to be landing on Trilogy, but El Shuckles, he's low, he's going to be forced to back away. Two kills, absolutely free for Corbinate. He might find the third one, is Rob Diggity quite low himself. One more miss, fact, should do it. Trilogy finding it with a slice and dice in a second. But it's like him quite low. Okay, going to be claiming the life of Rob Diggity. El Shuckles killing Trilogy, and meanwhile, Groff taking down this to his passive form. But El Shuckles doing his best on Money Block, but there's a great time having none of it, just feeding there as well. And that's a fourth kill for Corbinate, and they take down the tower as well. So Corbinate taking the fight to, by themselves and making sure that they have the advantage now. So Corvidae really starting to bring the fact that they have this mid-game pressure of the soul as well as, a, as well as the Nemesis now starting to come online. It's really important that they do get this advantage because Avangard, they're looking to take this game away, especially after that earlier invade. But now, with this slight turn of pressure, Corvidae, they've stopped the bleeding and they can now kind of pause, like get a sigh of relief, breathe in a bit and go back at it, at it again. Well, don't forget, the later the game goes on, the less effective and the less scary the burst becomes out from Liquid Ray and El Chuckles as those assassins. Might not do as much damage in the late game as an Owelix, or as a Nemesis, for example. So, Avogadro should really be looking to end this game as quickly as possible before their like, early game team comp starts to fall off. Yes, and Trilogy, again, he's just been playing really well. He's just, every time he's been playing this Nemesis this week, he's just been doing well in his team fights, using the Divine Judgments correctly. And currently, he's sitting on a very, he's, I believe he's going 0, 4, and 9. Even though he maybe died a lot, he's just been getting a lot of assists, helping the team out. That's kind of what you want to do with Nemesis in the earlier mid-game. Yeah, and the score isn't really reflective of the playstyle which he's having right now. His classification caught up by four members. Four CC's intoxicate. Up to the air goes Mouse. This should be one dead back as the Fat Man is down. I repeat, the Fat Man is down. Rataska in the air as well. Not going to be going. It actually is just me retreating back to the safety of his team. They're going to kill. They're going to get out. They're going to take that win. Yeah, so Avangard, if they, that's exactly what you said. They needed to start getting these teamfight advantages again every time they get more kills onto people, especially Case of Vacation. Putting behind a Barkus makes it very hard for him to do his job, which is jump in and throw out down the Intoxicate. If you're behind one, your Intoxicate isn't doing as much damage, and two, you essentially have a lot less HP to work with, and due to the fact that El Chuckles can shred those protections that you need to keep yourself alive, Case of Vacation is going to have a much, much harder time now engaging these teamfights. Trying to defend the mid tower avant guard, not gonna be able to do it unfortunately. Trilogy can be caught in at that typhoon. Now Chuckle's gonna kill the jungler. The problem is down. The left side tier one did fall for Corvidae, but they taken out the tier two in mid from avant guard, and they do lose a kill for it, but it's still think it's worth it for the side of Corvidae. Well, it just as I said, it opens up the map that tier two blocks off a lot of camps, but with so with trilogy falling there. They're trying to slow him down, because as you can see, Trilogy hasn't been able to finish off the Void Shield while uh, Liquid Renegade on the Susano already finished the Void Shield. So they need to keep the Nemesis behind, keep her from being able to buy those crucial items she needs to finish off the game. So when people play Nemesis, I usually see two different styles of play. I usually see a heavy basic attack focus build, and I usually see a heavy movement speed slash ability based focus build. Which one do you think would suit Nemesis in this game? In this game, she really need, she's not going to be able to, a lot of the people in this game, except for Mouse, who the only escape he really has is either the Fog or the Fire Shards, is to be able to chase them down. I think the ability is going to be more important. You want to be able to slow them, you want to be able to really just catch them out, especially due to the fact that when Gruff uses the meds, you're reducing the attack speed. And also, if Gruff really wants, they can go into a height of the Nemean and make it even harder for the Nemesis to want to consider going on the tankier target. 
Just Speedy going into his disapparated form. The Sanctuary has been used as well. And, well, the ultimate from Mouse is going to be immune completely. But I still think Just Speedy is going to fall down here. Supernova throwing down the last attempt. Look, really look for this kill. Going to fall down to Just Speedy. And, well, going to be claiming a one-for-one one there as Gruff knocks him up into the air. But it could be even worse. Rob Diggity caught out by himself. Trilogy can be slowing him down. But the dash is good. As El Chuckles makes his rotation. No, Gruff can be receiving the Divine Judgment. Desecrator with the kill. He's on a rampage. Red Tusker up into the air. He goes... This trader looking for the Neathor, not going to be able to find it. The Gold Fury is up and ready. Okay, it gives chase to Mouse, making sure that the, the rest of the members of our guard are zoned away as Corvidae take down the Gold Fury. Robert and Mouse is still here to look for a steal. Yes, as they're trying to do the Gold Fury, but now... Uh, oh, but it is going to go the way of Avagard. Actually, do steal it. Mouse is fog. Claims the life of the Gold Fury. Cuts the quite low. Warlord base attack is all he needs. They're not going to be able to find it, but Mouse is going to give up on his life for the Gold Fury. Completely worth. Yes, especially. That's exactly what Ivan got. They, they could not, and I repeat, they could not allow Corbett to get this goal for it. If they got that, that would have been possibly the lead that they've been trying to keep this entire game going. And now since they've been able to steal it away, they can look to try and take another tower over either in the, the duo lane or the solo lane or even just the mid lane. Yeah, they need to get some towers down right now. I mean, Corbinate, they've got three towers up as well as Avagar. For 19, 20 minutes into the game, you sort of expect them to have two, maybe even one tower left. That's Desecrator quite low himself. The Soul Reef, the Soul um, Eater proc does indeed happen. The Sanctuary is popped. Desecrator gets a good root off, but it's not going to be enough to save his life. One more missed attack from El Chuckle should do it. Trilogy low as well. Rob Diggity gets the second kill of this engagement. It's a three versus four. As Mouse is actually back at base, affecting the fight with the fire shards. And as that's going on, that's I actually, are they able to push the tower though? Uh, no, they are not. Good defense coming out from Corviday. As well, just the three members there, full health. Ultimate still available on Kytification and Just Speedy means that Avagar don't really want to push into it just yet. They want to make sure that Mouse is here. They want to make sure that minions are available to them. Instead, they're going to stretch out this fight across a bit more of a larger area of the map. With Ren Liquid Renegade and Elchuk is rotating to this meta, trying to take this objective down. And Gruff just zoning away Just Speedy Kytification from this rotation for a flank. Yes, Gruff can easily do that. He's such a, well, a large hitbox, but two. Quite the tank he got, he can easily just stand there and take a couple hits as well as use that mess to really mess with the side of Corvade and just make El them regret trying to quite low. Him. This should be a kill for KO. Looking for the umbrella runner, we're gonna find him up into the air. He goes, gonna be blocked though. It's the thought by Rob Diggin. He's gonna sacrifice his life for, for his solo lane buddy. KO gets the kill that he wanted, but not on the person that he wanted to find. The grenade gate quite low as well. Gonna be knocked up, gonna be zoned, gonna be CC'd, and gonna be killed by Trilogy. Dashing through, mouse load as well. This could be a kill as well by Mouse, but the minion body block is real! Gruff gets out, Mouse gets out. Two kills for absolutely nothing for Corvidae, but they lose the tier 2 in mid. Yes, Corvidae are trying to just recoup their losses, but after that, still losing a tier 2 is still quite a major objective. What did the grass read out for Jackal? Well, the fire giant is being started up right now. The XP difference is completely even. Gold difference, 3,000 in favor of Avangard. Avangard, no, this fire giant's going down. They're looking to just try and get Corvade off it. They're looking to maybe even steal it. Kaisification, the first sacrifice in this fight. Just Speedy taken down to half health. Thanks to the fire giant, but he's not backing away from this fight. Trilogy half health as well. Up to the air, he goes from Gruff's epic uppercut. Going into the passive form, though, is Gruff. This is going to be a kill onto the support. And it's a big target indeed. KO on a rampage. And as KO is on a rampage, the Fire Giant, I'm guessing it's been leashed away, isn't it? Yeah, the Trilogy quite low as well as El Chuckles lands on him. Not enough damage to take down the enemy jungler. Level 20, El Chuckles. This Red Tusker is fed beyond belief. Yes, El Chuckles has been just playing extremely well all game. Ever since that early game invade, he's just been getting kill after kill after kill. And it only has two deaths to his name compared to the rest of it. He's also built a Void Shield similar to the Susano, just ensuring that if he wants to engage on someone, even though he's built a more of a hybrid damage build than just pure damage, he can still output a ridiculous amount of damage just simply because he has that flurry to shred those protections. Left hand side though, Desecrator quite low. Rob Digger looking for it with the Centaur, so I'm not going to be finding any of the shots. He's going to get turned around. The World Weaver does come out, not enough damage to kill the Chiron, just instead procs that Soul Eater passive and heals the backup, just speeding quite low as he gets dashed on by El Chucks, but the Divine Chucks comes out, Liquid Renegade in the back line, kills just speeding for the first kill, and it might be the only kill of this fight as everybody else is getting out. Out comes the Typhoon, knocks up Kaisification, KO, CC immune, double belly flop from Kaisification, they're looking to engage onto Liquid Renegade and Mouse, but Groff providing such a good zone, such a good barrier, just for a tanky Kamukana. 
Yes, and they, like, any pig they can get off right now, Valgard, is massive, because if they want to take the spider down, they need to be able to zone as many people out of the fight, or just even kill them, to ensure, especially if they want to push down this, just push down the Phoenix, either mid, or any of the lands, because once they get fire giant and a member is down, it just makes it easier for them to push their advantage even further. So just Speedy's build right now is a very interesting one. Went into 25 penetration at the very beginning, it's pretty much standard. Uh, if you go over here, it's an ADC in lane. Then it's gone into both the rings, his classification is taking quite low. Over the wall he goes, but rooted up by Gruff and teleported in, but Lincoln Renegade now chuckles, gets a kill, and is on a rampage himself. But back to that soul build, what, what benefits do you see from this build, and would you like to have seen maybe a more mage-focused build instead? I would have rather swap out that Telekines for the Polynomicon, and that way, essentially, you still get that auto attack buff, but the Telekines, I feel like, is not worth what you're paying in gold. The Demar Grip is pretty nice, just due to the fact you are throwing out a lot of auto attacks, and it's kind of oh, similar to Oh, but Trilogy quite low himself. Liquid like Renegade gonna claim it with the dot up in the air. Goes just speedy, but lands back down in his disapparated form, so no doubt Trilogy and up and got KO in his ultimate form, but he's gonna be cursed out, so he's not gonna be healing as much. 50% less healing right now. But he's still going to be A-OK -okay to get out good. Mez, Michael Makana, not enough time as the beats were popped by Discretion and KR was woken up from his slumber. Yes, and now after that, Avangana is going to keep pushing their advantage. They're just now winning all these team fights. Gruff doing a really good job on the Kumba Kana using the epic uppercut just at the absolute prime time. Yeah, left hand side. Gold Fury going to be stunner, but then leashed it immediately. Avagon, they don't feel comfortable in doing it given their health, mana, and ultimate pools available to them. And the health, mana, and ultimate pools available to Corvide. And it looks like Corvide recognizes they're going to be looking to try and take down this objective themselves. Our Chuckles, Rob Diggity, and Mouse is still in the area. Our Chuckles goes up into the air. Mouse in the fog. Going to get flopped on immediately by Classification. But it's the wrong decision, though. But Classification leaves his back like completely wide open to our Chuckles. But he's not going to be able to find the land or the damage he wants. Over the air goes Mouse with the fire shards. Very minimal impact right now from those ultimates. Yeah, so now Avant got um, they're still just sitting around that fire giant looking to farm, and they can easily, if they want now, they can actually look to go and take it. If we those ultimates down, that's a massive, just again, advantage for Avant They need to, every advantage they get, they need to look to expose, especially with this kind of a draft, and not let this late game get to the point. Because it's around 26 minutes now, and they need to start ending the game before Corbidae truly, and I mean truly, come online. Classification already getting the first kill. Mouse on the back line has fallen and KO, and the rest of them is Corbidae. They're pushing up, they're looking for Gruff. Godfrey has been unleashed. Gruff gets knocked up by the belly flop from back. He's knocked up by the dash of KO and Desecrator kills the supports. That's a 2 for 0 trade in favor of Corvidae. And this Godfrey is going to go their way as well. The game looking to set to be completely even once more. 18 to 18. Read the kills 26 minutes into the game. And this graph is going to be completely even as well. Godfrey gets taken down. And just waiting for it to update. 2,000 gold lead in favor of Avangar. But it may be less now as El Chuckles dives in far too late to defend the Gold Fury from his ultimate. And... DCC is going to come out in a second. The purification was going. Rob Dickin, he kills Kaisification in the meantime on the left hand side. It's just an absolute bait there by Avant Guards. I'll chuckles. Yeah, so now with that Gold Fury falling, that's what Corbett is. Again, they're just constantly building up their lead for that late game. And oh, now the Liquid Renegade get quite low himself, forced to teleport away. El chuckles himself is getting out as well. Both assassins. Quite low, leaving Rob Diggity by himself. Gonna get slowed up by the slice and dice. Gonna be knocked up by Kyo's dash as well. The stellar burst is just enough before Rob Diggity can get away with the giddy up. And well, oh, that's another kill going the way of Corvidae. It's 19 to 19. Yes, Corvidae, they're, they're just doing a really good job. There was a similar situation, as I said, in the very first time these two team planes in game number two. First game was a stomp. Second game, Corvidae, they were able to basically, they actually started dominating this mid game time. And then one team fight, they just threw in. Suddenly, Avant Guard just threw open the gates and took the time. And Corbett, they need to recognize this is a very similar situation to last time. And they need to be very careful how they choose to take objectives. I kind of want to see Corbett play in a best of five set against uh, some of the top teams in Oceana. Simply because what it looks like to me is they use the first game as sort of a scouting game. And then the next games, they look to just try and ban out the problems, get some counters for their team, and just play well from there. I imagine by game four, game five, they would find themselves as a very strong team. But you have to remember, this is the OPL. This is just the OPL, not a LAN event where simply you only have two games to make the most of your opportunities. And if you can't take those opportunities, you can't push your advantages, you're just not going to be able to climb the ladder. And obviously, Corbett, they've had it very rough. They've only joined in week number four. Every other team got a bit more experience, had a bit more time. But Corbett, they actually haven't been doing too badly for a team that literally joined in week four. They've put up resistance, even though they've had to go up against some of the harder teams. When it came to teams that are around a similar level, they've been doing a very decent job to fighting them. 
El Chuckle's gonna get caught a heal by just for using hits a stellar burst to the face. Not gonna be doing too much damage to him thanks to the fact he's got the Bulwark. A very tanky and resilient Ramtask with a lot of penetration as well. Got 30 on his kit uh, already and gonna be getting into another mace as well. Yes, that's definitely gonna be the Titans Band to finish off the build. A lot of Assassin and Melee focused builds kind of end with that Titans Band to give you that last extra bit of 30, 33% of penetration. Just to give you even more damage. And that's what Chuckle was, he just wants to be doing damage. Engagement going on right now on the fire giant Cursification quite low. Gruff sends somebody up into here. It's desecrated the last back down quite low. Cursification low himself as El Chuckle tries to go to the spot. How comes he intoxicate just onto Liquid Renegade? And that's gonna be the call for the person they're looking to try and kill. Desecrated gonna be getting a kill nearly onto Liquid Renegade's KO takes on Rob Digger to the left hand side. A solo kill for the Vamana against the Chiron. And it's just gonna be that one kill. Cursification and Liquid Renegade forced to go back to base. Gruff. Gonna be licking his wounds as well as El Chuckles, and it's just gonna be a complete wash. And thanks to that complete wash, they can now back. Uh, Avangard is gonna be forced to back off for a bit. They can't keep engaging like this. They need to come up with a bit of a different plan. It seems like now that this mid game is hit, Avangard oh, don't Mouse. Have Mouse is quite low as well, forced to use his sanctuary and purification already. Gonna be walked into the stellar burst. It's just been one more basic attack, kills him, and it's gonna be that Polynomicon basic. Killing out the mid, -may, mid lane mage. And this tower's gonna be falling down as well. So much attacks being killed out from Just Speedy. This created there with some penetration. Not much penetration on this build. He has got the execution. It's not gonna be finding too much to the towers. El Chuckle's low already. Forced to dash away as a tier 2 does indeed fall. Corvidae looking strong as they push up to this Phoenix. Yes, and since they have that soul with the Unstable Manifestation, they can easily shred it down. As well as the fact they have the Need and Trilogy all ready to take down this Phoenix. Oh, but the engagement has been brought out and up in the air goes Reaper from the knockup. Gruff with a double kill already. Desecrator and Trilogy fallen down. That's two big proponents of their team fight. Got already. Kaisification going to be surrounded by three members. Kayo be chased out by Luca Renegade. Dashing through him. Looks to try and turn it around. Rob Digger kills Kaisification, but it's the one, one versus one. Still going to go between Kayo and Luca Renegade. Not going to be getting any kills out of either player. And this fire giant wide open right now for Avantgarde. Gruff getting that double kill was the most important thing Avangard had to have done. If they lost the Phoenix there, that could be a very different story from what's about to happen. Because now, as you said, Avant, they actually have a free Fire Giant Omen to them. With only just Speedy and KO alive if they want to try and steal it. But even then, it's going to be very difficult to steal it from a five-man grouping. Yeah, KO zoned away there by Gruff. Forced to go back to base. Look at Renegade looking for the kill onto him. Going to be able to find him before he goes back to base. The rotational power from Susano too strong. Out comes Supernova from Just Speedy. So he's to try, try and disrupt this Fire Giant. Taking down by Avangard. Up to the air he goes. He is the separator. So won't eat the Mesha. Harder than damage. Avangard destroyed the Fire Giant. Destroyed Just Speedy. The second he appears from the separated form. And now this tier 2 on the right hand side is going to be the next objective. Yes. What, what Corbin I tried to do them a couple minutes ago. Avangard are going to do that with even more fury. Now they have that Fire Giant. But they have the sustain. They have the power. And they can easily look to end this game from here. And Avangard most likely probably will end it here. And they can, they definitely can end it. They just need to find one, maybe two more picks. They need to make sure to get at least one or two Phoenixes down. That's that's the minimum they need to do with this Fire Giant buff. And, well, they're going to be going on this right side Phoenix. Right away, Mini Waves pushed in. Five members stronger of Avantgarde as the engagement breaks out. Desecrator and Trilogy knocked up by the Typhoon. Intoxication are Desecrator quite low. Up into the air. Ghost Liquid Renegade. Trilogy quite low. Going to be avoiding the damage from the, through the Cosmos through all Chuckles. Right side Phoenix starts full. Mid Phoenix gonna be pressured out as well as classification is quite low. And with the mid Phoenix falling as well, they're just gonna keep pushing. They can actually look to go for the tie now if they really want it. They can easily just burst down since they have the damage to do it. The mid Phoenix actually stays up, surprisingly. Just, just the one Phoenix taken down as other guard go back to the base. They go, they're just gonna reach they're gonna reset, take that skull fury, and then look to push in for the final push after they've gone back and bought, bought some items. Yes, but they still have Fire Giant for a decent amount of time now. They can, as you said, they can back off, get their items, and then just regroup and push in for that final push. Even they just take two Phoenix or take the middle Phoenix, as well as ensure that the solar lane is pushed and go straight for the jugular. And it's very difficult enough for Corbinet to actually get a stranglehold in these fights. Oh my god, have so much control available to them with the team flight spitting, splitting potential of Liquid Renegade on that Susano or Chuckles on that Rat Tasker. It's very difficult for Corbinet to group up and just burst down somebody by themselves. If the fight goes on for 10 seconds, Corbinet do have the advantage, but Avagard are not letting that happen. No, their team is literally designed around burst, burst, burst. Even the support with the Groggy Strike, that's a burst. Chiron, 
has the Centaurus, the Master Ball Shot training exercise. Every single member of that team is designed to burst you down quicker than you can sustain it, especially Neath. The heal is only so good. The Radiance takes a little bit of time. Even KO's HP5, it takes a little bit of time for it to activate, and by that time, it is already too late, especially since they have that Fire Giant buff to do even more damage. Left side tier 1 going to be the call from Avant Garde as they group up on the left hand side. No response coming off for Corbinane and they need to defend at the Phoenix, they need to let this tier 2 go. If they try to defend this and the fight fails, it's going to be game over and they do not want this. This is a good opportunity for Corbinane. They've had a great game so far and they do not want to make sure that they throw it out by one stupid engagement. Yes, as you said, that Phoenix is really their only advantage they can get. They can try and apply some sort of Phoenix damage to the tankier target, who usually just goes underneath and tries to take it while the rest of the team goes for it. But even then, Corda, they need some sort of miracle to bring this defense back. Up in the air goes Mouse. Five shots have been rained down upon Corbin A. But KO quite low himself. Forced to go back even in that ultimate form of his. Coming down is El Chuckles looking for a kill. Who's going to be landing on him? Landing on him. It's a Desecrator. Stunned out. CC'd. So low, El Chuckles gonna kick the first time. Trilogy falling down as well to Mouse. It's a three versus five for Avagard as they take down the left side Phoenix. Mid Phoenix still stands, it's weak, and they should be taken down as well. All, all three Phoenixes are gonna be taken away. Corbinet in a, a lot of trouble here as Avagard. They are a hair's breadth away from winning this game. Yes, and Avagard, they can just now look for the Titan. They've gotten all three Phoenixes, the last things that stand in the way of the Titan. And if they just go for Titan now, they can end it. They, they know they can do it, and they probably will. And Kai's vacation and Kaio falling down as well. Just beating dies to Rob Diggity. That's a D inside. That's going to be game over. Avagar take the 2 0 against Corbinet. 34 minutes, 55 seconds on the clock. A longer game this time, but they still prove that they have got what it takes to get that fourth seed and get to land. Yeah, so next week, when they, they have to be able to win, they need to get these last couple of wins and ensure they get ahead of Lama. 